So hello everyone, today I'm joined by Quentin, who is a very experienced robotics engineer. And he will show us uh, today how to use the URL robot with the gripper and integrate it with ROS2 in Isaac Sim. Why don't you in introduce yourself and explain them what you will present us today? Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Quentin Dena. I'm a robotic engineer. I'm going on my own right now for robotic stuff and also Isaac. I'm more on the hardware field at the beginning, but now I'm trying to do some simulation and try to develop something around it. So what I want to show you today is how to integrate, as uh, Mama said, uh, Litchi said, uh, robotic 2F, uh, 2EF 140 gripper inside was 2 and also an, uh, inside Isaac. And also show the comparison between using a mock component from was 2 control, topic-based was 2 control. It's two way to work with simulation and with uh, was 2 and Isaac. And it's important to know uh, how it works and why also topic-based control can be better if you um, want to uh, simulate close to the, sim uh, the real world uh, your robot and our environment. Yes, and uh, before we start, I might want to ask first, could you explain to the audience like why should we even use simulation um, for this task, like move it, which we will see later? Yeah. We can use simulation for training robots as you do uh, with uh, so arm and all your uh, video you, you show. And But when you want to go back to real world, uh, firstly, you want to try how your, sim uh, how your application works. The cool thing with Rust 2 uh, is that you can run all your application close to the production environments. And when you add uh, Isaac Sim with it, uh, you will have photorealism and physics environments, and you will you will uh, really get really close to uh, what the, your real robots will do. And you can simulate any collision and. Yeah, we can simulate quite, quite everything we have in Physic. Um, so it's better to try before in simulation than in real because uh, robots are high cost. Yeah. I'm very happy that you have open sourced everything. Um, <coughs> could you uh, show us how to like run your environment and let the people yeah. know how they can try it themselves? Yeah, sure. Uh, firstly, yeah, I have um, done a repo for it. For it, it's forked from um, another one, which is a super clean uh, Rust2 integration for the rear and gripper, only for Rust2, but yeah, super clean environment. And also, I just added some other repository from uh, Universal Robots and Robotic. And you, you you have to know that I've modified some of the package of Universal Robot and Robotic Gripper. So if you're already familiar with the uh, workflow of this package, uh, you will see some uh, change. And maybe that's it's not really I, I've changed it I changed it in not a really a clean way, but it was just for the prototype and 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 getting faster to what I want to show. So uh, firstly. Um, yeah, you will see that there is some properties and it's not so complicated environment. Um, I've run my uh, repositories uh, in a dev container uh, environment. So this is why I ask you to have Docker and Docker Compose also. Uh, you don't need to have a Rust2 Amber uh, installed locally. I will uh, remove it. Oh. Could you explain yeah. what uh, Docker containers are? Okay, so a Docker container, um, it's kind of uh, like another computer inside your computer. Uh, it works uh, almost like a, a virtual machine, if you know a little bit of, about it. But it's um, it's a small consuming um, uh, processor and graphic stuff for your computer. Uh, so when, for example, when I'm I'm running the um, this uh, the Rust two the file environment, I started with uh, Ubuntu uh, already created uh, container and just adding uh, added some stuff inside it uh, related to Rust two. For example, um, I can see here with the Docker PS that I have two um, running environments, so the Rust and Isaac one, and if I want to restart one of them, I can do it like that. And it will restart the environment as it's a, uh, if it's a computer. Uh, so yes. it's better to use an uh, environment like that because um, this is something you can um, see in a production environment um, because uh, the container is builded by um, the GitLab or Git runner. Then you just have to grab and download uh, the container which is um, created and just run it. So yeah, it's it's really nice. Basically, like Docker containers um, make sure that everyone is kind of having the same 
dependencies yeah, and everything so, is running the same. Yeah, exactly. For report, yeah, for um, yeah, exactly. And it can, uh, for example, I'm running uh, in local uh, in uh, 24 uh, Ubuntu, uh, but you can also run it in 20. As you have uh, Docker environments, uh, you can run it almost everywhere if you have enough uh, processor processing uh, units. So here, uh, I'm in my uh, local um, environment. And first thing is to see that in the dev container folder, I have two uh, dev container uh, JSON uh, configuration configuration files, one for the Isaac and one for the Rust2. Uh, it points inside uh, to uh, Docker Compose and Docker File. If you want, you can go inside it. Um, you consider that this will run as uh, like your production environment. Now that I explained a little bit the uh, Docker environment, um, and the dev container, I will I will show you, uh, you how it works. Firstly, um, there is a small command that is uh, really important. It's this one, exhaust uh, plus, uh, because it will let your um, your Docker uh, running uh, GUI application. I'm, I'm pretty sure there is a way to do it in permanent permanently, uh, but as I'm working with other projects in my computer, I don't want to uh, um, allow it every time. Uh, on my computer. So when you restart your computer, you have to um, launch this uh, small command. I'm here. I will start my dev container. Well, it's already started, but I ju just opened the folder inside it. So here, um, I'm running cursor right now, but in VS Code, it's the uh, same. It's an extension of um, VS Code. You can select the container you have since you have a dev container JSON somewhere. So the first one is the um, Rust2 one. Uh, it will do some thing, but working. When uh, if you if if it's the first time you're running uh, the dev container and opening it inside it, it will take some time because it will uh, build uh, the uh, Docker and the container. So it's normal uh, to see it uh, took some time. You can see it at the bottom left. I mean my Rust2 dev container. After that, I will launch the other one. I've separated. I, I, I can. Um, uh, we can uh, do a, a one for all dev container. Uh, but as I want to think about my uh, application as a real uh, one, um, if you isolate your container from Isaac, uh, the Rust two container will be small, and you can use it and grab it and just point to your uh, real robot, and it should work. <laughs> Maybe you, for sure you will have some work, but um, I prefer to separate uh, and think about Isaac Sim as my real hardware and uh, my Rust2 environments as the compute one. So this is why I have two dev containers. So right now we are in the Isaac one. Firstly, uh, you will have to um, first start Isaac, uh, because if you don't start Isaac uh, at the beginning um, and run the simulation, when you open your the Rust 2 application, it will say, hey, I don't see any robots running, so I can't start. So um, I'm running, running uh, Isaac, and I don't know if you see it, but I've done a small script that um, do all the uh, Rust 2 um, sourcing stuff for Isaac. So instead of just running uh, Isaac um, sim point uh, sh. You have to uh, run a script post install uh, Rust to Isaac start. So right now we have Isaac sim working here, and when I go to the assets, we can start. I've shared two. Um, URTN, URTN plus robotic uh, assets because I want to um, show uh, the one with mock components uh, was to control um, topic and the topic based one. Um, so firstly, I will start with the topic based. It took some time. Oh, there is the robots. And you see when I start it, it's going to the initial, posi initial position. You need to think about these robots inside Isaac as a real uh, robot. So when I, I will start uh, my uh, Rust2 environment, it will go at the same position. So here I'm in my Rust2 dev container. I'm starting. Just a quick question while it's yeah, starting. Sure. Um, so basically, you have these two, let's call it virtual environments from Docker, and mm -hmm. they are communicating over Rust2 
um, yeah. to each other from ISXM to to this um, the, the Docker image that you have here, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's use the uh, um, network of the host host. And as uh, I don't set up any uh, um, domain uh, host, uh, domain ID uh, for us two, um, it's bro broadcasting to everyone. Uh, so yeah, this is why it's communicating. So right now I'm running the Rust 2 control um, launcher. You can see that there is my uh, how do you say that my controller running. Yeah, and then here I'm launching the Move It one. So this is this is where we control the robot. So here we are. We have our robots at the same position as the one in Isaac. Okay. Um, so. Firstly, Movit um, is a package that helps you to integrate uh, kinematic solver and uh, doing some collision avoidance uh, and grappling things. It's um, an all-in-one package, and you can, um, if you configure it, your, um, this package uh, in the right way, um, you can use it as it is uh, the API uh, of your robot. Uh, for example, the universal robot, uh, you have the PLC, which is the controller, the real controller, which is uh, um, uh, controlling and, and doing uh, planning stuff for the robot. And you can completely replace it um, with uh, move it. You will still pass through it, but um, you will just only um, send um, WebSocket command through uh, the um, universal robot driver uh, to the controller and then to the robots. So yeah, it's it came with a lot of cool things, and and yeah, it helps you control your your robots. You can select the um, um, kinematic server you want, and yeah, how it works, the speed limits, uh, etc. Yeah, it's. Um, it's your motion planner. Um, AirViz, it's just a debugger tool. Um, it just helps you to show um, what's inside your robot brain. As you move it is your brain, you will see uh, what, in, uh, what is inside your, your robot. Uh, yeah, cool. Thank and you. It's OK, OK. Uh, so at the left, I have the, um, AirViz, and the right, uh, Isaac. And if I do some control, some movement there, I don't know, like that. And I do some plan and execution, you will see the robots moving. Um, the, the speed of the robots is uh, the one from uh, Isaac. Uh, so in, um, in the move it, you can um, add some uh, um, uh, alarm, like uh, does my robots uh, are slow or um, does the movements uh, are going at the right position and, you, and move it will uh, raise some error if um, the Isaac one is under the limit you've set up. So yeah, that's cool. And the main difference uh, between the mocked uh, component, I will show you it, show it right now. Here we are, um, yeah, in a um, uh, mocked component system uh, instead of the topic-based ROS2 control. Um, the main difference is that um, in uh, mocked components, move it, send command to itself. Um, so move it, you send commands, it's going to roster control. And as you have market components, um, roster control uh, um, sends the com uh, resend the command uh, as a joint state uh, to move it. So uh, you can use, you can still use Isaac, but uh, your robot inside move it uh, won't uh, emit, uh, it won't be the robot. It's only copy uh, the, um, the joint position. So you see the robot running in Isaac, but you can see that in Isaac, I have a collision and the robot doing completely uh, wrong stuff. And it's completely normal uh, because it's physic, physics, again, physics. And in uh, move it, you see that the robot is right. It's at the position I ask, it, I ask him to go. Um, it's also not good because um, if, it's, if I control my robot like that in real world, I will have the, for some problem. So this is why um, uh, topic-based was to control is important because here's the main difference. When I start uh, my uh, uh, an ex uh, plan and execution, um, you see that the robots won't move firstly because my simulation won't run. And that's important because uh, that says that, okay, my robot is not uh, running. So even if I ask him to move, he won't because the real robots, even if it's in Isaac, won't move. And now I run it and send the command, 
and you see have, that I have a collision inside um, move it uh, inside Isaac and um, but and the robot stop because um, he can't go further and the, and you see the same um, movement in move it same uh, compartment and so yeah that's the main difference between uh, mock component and topic was to um, topic based was to control um yeah it's that in the topic based uh, was to control you integrate isaac sim in your uh, control loop so from what we've just saw um you managed to basically have like some security factors inside right mm -hmm. and um, i believe this can be also crucial for uh, other isaac ros tasks like isaac manipulator which is using yeah. like cuda accelerated ros2 yeah. applications uh, could you maybe talk about this and maybe future plans? Yeah, my goal was to create a good template uh, to work with um, between was and Isaac. And my next move will be to integrate Qmotion planning. I want to understand how the uh, connection works and also uh, how far I can go in this, even in simulation, but really close to um, hardware uh, control. Yeah, because I, I think Isaac uh, could be a, will, uh, is a amazing tool, and it will help uh, you to uh, get your uh, robots uh, to the real world faster than if you do it. Yeah, I think um, that was uh, quite informative. Um, I think <laughs> we will wrap up the video here and call it part one. Um, I would love to see more, and as we discussed, you are also willing to have like more parts with this commotion that you've talked about. So yeah. I think the community can stay excited. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm sure we, we will see amazing things. Um, yeah. And for the community, feel free to ask questions uh, in the comment section. Um, we are happy to answer these and also ideas that you think uh, could be maybe also added or um, how to contribute to your repo and etc. I'm, I'm sure yeah, you would sure. love. Yeah, exactly. And if you see any bugs and if you want some maybe uh, no, features, uh, you can uh, reach the issue um, page of the repo and just see if I've, I could update it. Nice, perfect. Okay, I will link everything down in the description. So thank you again and uh, yeah, see you next time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Omar.